Hello everyone, welcome back to another Amped 5 update video. In this update, we are bringing to you the most sought after and requested feature for 5, as well as lots of new video codecs for writing and some general improvements to the software. To start us off, I'm going to be introducing our new undo and redo feature. Okay, so I'm definitely excited to be introducing the undo redo feature to you. It's something that I know a lot of our users have requested over the years. And me personally, I've also requested it because it's a very viable uh, tool to have when we're going through workflows and we end up making a mistake. Now I'm going to go through a very quick workflow where I often make a mistake and always wanted that undo redo feature. And that is when I'm using correct perspective. So if I'm using correct perspective on this license plate, for example, and I correct that perspective, I can uh, see it much clearer now. What I often do when I use this filter is I forget that I'm still in my selection mode and I will accidentally make a, a click in the viewer. And when I do that, when I'm still in this output selection, it will try uh, put everything into a single pixel and I end up like an image like this. So now with the undo, I can just simply go control Z and that's gonna undo that mistake for me. So the undo and redo icons, you can see them in the top left here. So we've got the undo arrow and the redo arrow and you can see the shortcuts there, control Z and control Y. It will save multiple steps in your workflow. So I can continue to step backwards all the way to um, before I even use the image loader. And from here, I can go forwards again, back to where I corrected that license plate. So I hope you're excited about this feature. I think it will be one of the most used uh, new features that we, we've put in and it will avoid uh, having to redo uh, full workflows when we make those small mistakes. The next feature that I'm going to speak about is an update to our video writer. So we've added new codecs to the video writer. We've added H.265 and we've added FFV1. These two new codecs can be found in the video writer and they're both used for different situations and circumstances. So if I go to my right video writer and we take a look under the format category, here we'll see that we've now got H.265 and FFV1. And you can see that we can place these in different containers. So we've got the AVI, the MKV, MP4, H.265 and MOV as well. I'm just going to use the AVI while I talk through this video, but I just wanted to make you aware that we do have the different containers for them. So firstly, H.265. So the H.265 codec is a more sophisticated version, an upgrade to the H.264. It's going to allow you to compress the video to a smaller file size whilst maintaining good quality. It is a lossy compression that will occur but you will be able to reduce that file size. So if I choose AVI H265 and apply that, you see that it's now going to compress this video. The difference between H264 and 5 is that the required computational is a little bit higher for H265, but the encoding is more efficient. Next, we have the FFV1 codec. Now, this is a really clever codec that is becoming more and more popular as an archiving codec or as an intermediate codec for a file that needs more processing. Now, this is a lossless transcode, so you're not going to lose any of the original information, but it's going to reduce that file size for archiving. Again, to demonstrate this, if I go to write video writer, I can find that FFV1 
codec and apply that. Now to show you how clever this codec is, what I can do is I can go to my link and video mixer and I can choose that original file and the newly written file. And I can check the similarity of these and you can see that there's no difference between the two video files. So it's a completely lossless codec. If we take a look at the file size of this, you can see that it's going to be quite a large file size, but it's much smaller than, let's say, the raw codec that we were using as a uncompressed codec before. Now, sticking to the theme of the video writer, the next update I'd like to share with you is that we've enabled hardware acceleration into our video writer. Now we've always wanted five to be accessible to everyone and to be accessible to everyone. We've had to limit how much of the hardware of a system is used for the software. However, some users have access to incredibly powerful hardware, which isn't being utilized by five. So now we're adding the option to users to be able to enable that hardware acceleration to increase the processing power and decrease the time it takes to write out videos. So to use the hardware acceleration, all we need to do is in the parameters of the video writer, you will see this hardware acceleration box now. You just need to select the option you have available to you then five will use your hardware to generate this file faster than it would without the hardware acceleration enabled moving away from video rider we're going to start talking about the playback of videos in five so as you may be aware we've been doing a lot of research in getting accurate playback of videos when shown in five one of the hardest and most important aspects of a video to get correct in playback is the correct playback speed. Now, as we know, a lot of videos will play back using their average frames per second. We recently introduced the ability to play back a video using PTS information. We've now gone one step further and also allowed videos to be played back using their timestamp information. Not all videos will have PTS timing information. So now that we've added this ability to play back a video using the timestamp speed, will allow a larger compatibility for videos to be played back accurately. So in this example, I've got a video that has an average frames per second of 25 frames per second. If I play this video normally, it's going to play that video at 25 frames per second. What I can do now is next to that play back or next to that play option, you can see we've got the playback mode and in there we've got the PTS based playback and the timestamp based playback. I can now choose the timestamp based playback because this video's got a timestamp on it. You'll see that my play button has now changed green. If I were to choose PTS, it would change yellow. And now that I've got it enabled to play back using the timestamp, if I play it now, it's going to ignore the average frames per second and play back this video in accordance to what the timestamp is telling it. Another update that you will find with the player is the ability to listen to audio frame by frame when navigating through a video. When the task is to synchronize audio to video, it's really important that you're able to hear and see that audio stream at the same time as the video. Now that we can allow you to hear the audio to a specific frame, it will make that task of synchronizing those frames together much easier. So all we need to do to be able to hear the audio of our video frame by frame, 
We just need to navigate through it either using the arrow keys or the J and L key. If I use the arrow keys and go through this video, you'll be able to hear the audio of that frame. And the same for the L and J keys. You'll find that there are a lot more features coming to you in this update. And to discover more about these, I would recommend that you go to our blog page and read the update blog post to find out more. I hope you enjoy this update video and look forward to using the new features in your future investigations. Take care and see you next time.